Thanks for watching our tutorial about our SAML single sign-on plugin together with Google G Suite or Google Cloud Identity as it's now called and just-in-time provisioning. We'll use our SAML plugin to authenticate users against um, Google Cloud Identity as well as creating them with just-in-time provisioning. So based on the SAML response, um, we'll use the information contained in the SAML response to be able to create and update users in your Atlassian application. So if you look at this, also check out our user sync functionality, which synchronizes via the Google G Suite API as an alternative. Right, I'm in admingoogle.com. Let's go to apps, web and mobile apps, add an app and say add custom SAML app. Now it wants to have a name. Um, make it a good name because that's the name that also appears um, on the user's um, dashboard when they see uh, apps that they have access to and also give it uh, maybe a good app icon that they can recognize it. Let's continue here for my demo. Let's say download metadata. This downloads a metadata file which essentially contains all the URLs and certificates that you see at the bottom of the page. So we can import that in our plugin, making it a lot easier than doing the cut and paste that otherwise would be required. So let's do that and then go to continue. And now it wants the ACS URL and the entity ID of our plugin. That's essentially uh, your base URL from um, Jira um, with the ending plugin servlet SAML SSO. But our plugin will also show you that. Um, you'll see that in the next steps. You could paste it, copy and paste it from there if you like. Um, and then the name ID section. Um, the name ID is usually the SAML response attribute that contains the username. So here we configure what, the, what um, Google sends as the username in the SAML response and the default is um, the basic information, the primary email of that user. If you want something uh, different there, then you obviously have to adjust it here. I say to continue. Right, now we get to uh, the attribute mapping. And since this is, a, this is a tutorial where we want to use our just-in-time provisioning, so creating and updating the user based on values in the SAML response, in this screen, we can actually configure what attributes are being added to the SAML response. To be able to create a user, um, we need at least a, um, a first name, last name that can be combined to the full name of the user and the um, email address of the user. Um, the username we already have in the name ID attribute. So let's say add mapping, select field, first name, and I'm going to call that first name. Um, that's the attribute in the SAML uh, response. Let's say another mapping, which is the last name. Let's call that last name. And another mapping, um, the primary email address. Let's call that mail. And these are also the values that are the, our plugin defaults to when you select that you uh, create a integration with um, G Suite. Essentially, you can um, use whatever you like here, uh, but then you also need to adjust the settings on our plugin side so that both sides match. Let's say finish here. Right. Now the last thing we have to do on the uh, Google side is to turn on this uh, application. Under um, user access, you see it's currently off for everyone. Let's change that. Right, here you can turn it on for everyone. Say save. You could also limit that to some uh, organizational units. Um, I've turned it on for everyone. It's really your choice um, what you do in, in your settings. So that's all we have to do on the Google G Suite side. Um, let's now move over to our plugin. So here I'm in my um, Jira demo system. You see I've only got the admin user um, configured here. So we want our plugin to create a new user and also log that user in. So let's say SAML single sign on. And the first time we go there, it shows us our um, getting started wizard. And the thing we want to do is add a new IDP. You want to have G Suite. Um, down here you also find the um, link to the step-by-step -step documentation if you need it. Now we can go to next. 
Here you would see the entity ID and the ACS um, URLs, could copy it. That's the stuff I already entered in Google, but if you can't remember that, uh, you certainly find it here during the setup wizard. And let's go to next now. Let's say I have a metadata XML file. Select the XML file and let's say import. And there you see metadata import successful. Let's go to next then. Right, user ID transformation uh, or user ID attribute and transformation. That's the section where our plugin wants to know um, if the usernames on the Google side are the same as the usernames you want to use in um, uh, Jira. Um, in, in this tutorial, we use the same. We actually use the username that's being sent from Google to create the user in um, Jira. But if you would want to do any adjustments like dropping the domain name, doing a different attribute, uh, things like that, if I just quickly uncheck that box, you could um, do these settings um, down here. But we don't need that here, so let's go to next. Right, user creation update. That's where the plugin wants to know if we wanted to create and update users. And in this case, the answer is yes, we want that. And the method we want is update from SAML attributes, which is the just-in-time provisioning. Now we can do a couple of settings here. Yes, we want to create some new users in the Jira internal directory. Now here it wants the full name attribute. Um, that's combined from first name and um, last name in the SAML response. And then also the email attribute. And that contains... Um, um, the mail attribute from the summer response. And you can see the full name attribute is actually uh, combined out of the first and the last name um, together. That's why there are the curly brackets. So the next thing is uh, under group settings, we could also specify that uh, an attribute that con uh, contains groups. We haven't done that in this tutorial here, but uh, if you wanted that, you could also um, do that setup. Uh, but the next thing I want to do is um, always add users to these groups. So every user that the uh, plugin creates, I want that user to be a member of the Jira software users group. So I'll add that group here and then it gets assigned to every um, created user. Right, let's say save for next then. And that essentially uh, finishes the setup of the plugin mostly. Now we can test our settings. So um, let's say so start. That creates an, what we call an authentication tracker, which keeps everything around an authentication together. And it created a special link for us here, which I'm going to copy here, and now going to open an incognito window. This is going to redirect us to Google, where I can log in with that user, with my test user. That's G Suite. Solution.de. And now you see I get redirected back to Jira, and since it's the first time I log in with that user, I also get the first start wizard. So let's go back to our authentication tracker here. Uh, there we go. You actually see the authentication tracker now says success. The status is locked in, and if I scroll a little bit down, um, you see a lot of troubleshooting information here. And um, down to the um, uh, summer request, summer response, um, and the HTTP headers. So this is very useful troubleshooting information if something goes wrong. You can actually download this tracker uh, as a JSON file, and you get that information onto your PC, so that you can attach it to an existing support case with us, for example. But also you have the contact uh, support button here. So if you um, click that, you can open a ticket straight in our Jira service management system with this tracker attached. So it contains a tracker and a little bit of additional information um, of the plugin configuration and the host system. Certainly no private keys or passwords, uh, but a lot of the uh, envir uh, environment, uh, environmental information. Sorry, guys. Um, that's uh, useful to have uh, when troubleshooting. But since this was a success, um, let's go to next here. And this is the last page of the wizard. So anything we've done up until now didn't interfere with any um, uh, user's logins. 
So you've basically seen the special URL that we got for the authentication tracker that redirected us. Users still got their normal um, login and password prompt. Now I can say enable SSO redirect here and save and close and that then means all users get redirected to um, G Suite for the login. If you prefer that to happen during a maintenance window or after you informed your users and leave that box unchecked, say save and close and um, you can do that in the redirection tab later on. Thanks guys.